Hello, Andy. Ah, golly jeepers, mister, you scared me. I see you just bought your first EV conversion. I sure did, but I didn't. Know, I don't know how to care for my EV conversion. Can you help me? Well, what are you doing with that gas can? Well, I was just going to pour some flammable fossil fuels into my car. Put down that gas can. You won't need to spread those long chain hydrocarbons anymore. Andy, did you know that the EV was first introduced on an early episode of The Simpsons in the optimistic 1980s? Electric car of the future, sponsored by the gasoline producers of America. Hello, I'm an electric car. I can't go very fast or very far. Since then, a lot has changed, and all it took was an eccentric gazillionaire and his best friend, Jay Leno. You're with Elon. Good to see you again, my friend. Good to see you. To create the first EV. Their first EV car made the journey all the way to orbit Mars. Unfortunately, the lack of charging stations has left it to orbit until the Harbor Freight solar panels give it enough juice to make it home in roughly a thousand years. Enough with this 100% true account of history. Let's learn more about your EV conversion. Since I don't need gas, let's just go for a drive. Whoa, Andy, did you notice anything different from the outside of your car? Well, no, mister. It looks like any other fully restored first-gen brat on the road. Andy, you're right. Your EV conversion doesn't let anyone know that your car runs on anything but electrons. But go ahead, open the door, and get in, and you'll notice there's a screen mounted in the view of the driver. Oh, look, someone with the keys in it. What happens when I try to start it? Do I need to pump the gas pedal three times like my uncle's old Dodge? Oh, Andy, let's turn the key and see what happens. You'll see on the screen battery temp, state of charge, motor temp, RPM amps, and any error codes. With the key on, the car is turned on. So be careful, Andy, and don't forget, don't allow any unlicensed or untrained drivers to sit in the driver's seat. This is really cool. Did I see the gas gauge move? You sure did. One other awesome feature, thanks to flash drive motors, you'll notice that the factory gauges are also displaying the same information as the screen. For example, the fuel gauge replicates state of charge and tax shows RPM. Temp gauge shows the relative battery temp. Be aware, sometimes you might see a brief error code when you turn the key on. This is due to pre-charging of components. No need to worry, this turns off as soon as you hear a small click. So if I don't need gas anymore, where does the power come from? Do I need like a really long extension cord? Don't be silly, Andy. The power for your EV comes from batteries. Batteries? Like the ones we jumpstart on my uncle's old dog so he can get to work every day? Sort of, Andy. These are not those old lead acid batteries. Rather, high-tech lithium ion batteries from Tesla. Before you go for a drive, you'll want to check your state of charge. Make sure you have enough charge to get where you want to go. Also, make sure you watch your battery temperature. But why does battery temperature matter? Batteries are sensitive to temperature. Unlike Robert Palmer, batteries don't like it hot. Their operational range vary from 0 to 55 degrees Celsius and a maximum of 60 degrees Celsius. I know that this measurement of Celsius might not have much meaning to you, thanks to the U.S. adopting the imperial system, but trust me, the batteries know. 60 degrees Celsius is very hot and can cause permanent battery damage. The battery modules do have coolant and a pump to circulate coolant, so they can stay cool. But they also have fail-safes in the BMS to keep track of things. Well, what happens when it's super cold outside? Well, like any batteries, cold temperatures can and will affect range. However, charged batteries can withstand cold temps as low as negative 40. 
Winter is coming. But it is best to store your car inside during the cold or keep your car plugged in with a pre-warmer to maximize range. The batteries are maintenance free, although you want to check the coolant level every 2,000 miles. Also, watch for coolant leaks, as this could lead to more serious issues if not corrected. One of the things I wanted to point out, on these cooling systems, they use a special type of coolant. Now this is a non-conductive coolant, and uh, it's, it's commonly sold at like an O'Reilly's or an AutoZone. Well, if it doesn't use gas anymore, how do I fill up the tank? Andy, you no longer have a tank full of explosive liquid. Now you have batteries. Have you ever heard of a cell phone? Well, the batteries in this car are similar to the ones in a cell phone. They are charged similar, just with a larger plug-in. Well, where do I find some of those charging plugs? First, you can use any 220 or 110 outlet to charge the car. But the voltage will affect the overall charging rate. 110 is slower charging than 220, and you can use any standard EV charging port since flash drive motors uses a standard plug-in. But remember, just like your cell phone, it is best not to run your battery down to the minimum or charge batteries too fast. It reduces the life of the batteries. If treated properly, it should last longer than your last student loan debt. Can the engine overheat like my uncle's old Dodge? Sir, sir, sir. Lane, can you jump in and steer it? First of all, Andy, an EV has a motor rather than an internal combustion, combustion engine, or as I like to call them, explosion engines. And although they can get hot, they have fail-safes to dial back the output. The max motor temp is 135 degrees Celsius, but power will be reduced near 130 degrees Celsius. So if it gets hot, just like mom's apple pie, give it a few minutes and allow it to cool down. Can I rev this up to 7,000 RPM like Matt Damon and Ford versus Ferrari? All right. This motor easily to a max of 7,000 RPM but the best operational range is between 3,000 and 4,000. Hey, my uncle told Dodge, do I have to chicken out oil every day? The motor is maintenance free. No oil to check or leaks onto your mom's driveway. Do I just push the gas pedal to move? Silly Andy, there is no gas pedal in an EV. Instead, you have an accelerator pedal. So yes, that's all you have to do. But this is no ordinary accelerator pedal. It is tuned to allow regeneration of the batteries. Regen sounds cool. Like a starfish after a kung fu fighting accident? Well, sort of. Regen is a setting that allows the motor to act as a generator under certain conditions. It can be turned on or off. Normally, flash drive motors tunes the throttle to provide regen at throttle positions less than 25%. The remaining 75% throttle will be for acceleration. You can tell if regen is on because you'll feel drag while coasting and see a negative number on the app screen. This shows that energy is being pumped back into the battery. Max regen is 170 amps. Also, regen will not work if the batteries are full, over 96% state of charge. Sounds like you know it all. Let's go driving. Not so fast, Andy. Here are some things to remember when driving. Number one, 35 to 4,500 RPM is normally ideal RPM range. Number two, regen won't work on fully charged batteries and also with a really low battery below 8%. Number three, the amps show how much energy you are using. It's best to keep it around 100 amps while cruising. This will maximize your mileage. Number four, the manual transmission has some special instructions. What do you mean special instructions? Does the transmission still have all of its gears, unlike my uncle's Dodge? 
It sure does still work. It allows gear selection just like it did before, but it's much simpler. First off, you don't need that pesky clutch to get started. From a stop, just pick a gear, take your foot off the brake, and mash the throttle. And away you go. Now you will only need to push the clutch pedal when shifting up or down. And when you come to a stop, you don't need to push the clutch pedal. Just let the brakes and regen stop you. No more swollen left caps while waiting in traffic. As a reminder, regen doesn't work with the clutch pedal pushed. Parking tip. You have to use your parking brake when the car is parked. The motor doesn't provide any resistance to stop rolling. Once you put some miles on the conversion, you can figure out the sweet spot to drive in and maximize those green miles. I need to park the car for several months while I finish the seventh grade. What do I do then? There are a couple steps you should take to ensure safe storage of your EV. First, make sure your batteries have at least 75% charge. A charged battery will be more cold temperature resistant. Secondly, you need to turn off the main disconnect switch to ensure nothing accidentally drains the battery. Do these steps and your EV will be ready for your 8th grade year. I sure am glad you were secretly watching me and stopped me from pouring gas into my EV. Is there anything else I should know like where I can or can't pour water on things? Andy, I'm so glad you asked. First off, don't pour water or let the jib, aka junkin box, get wet. It's full of fuses and relays. Don't pour water on the 12 volt battery either. It might short out. Again, it is not waterproof. Actually, don't pour water on anything. It's all sensitive and expensive to replace. I thought you were in the brat. I thought you were in the brat. Who's in the brat? Just driving the brat. <laughs>